Their boss has become quite the star in the Sorry. poker world. Starring on high stakes poker, beating Phil Helmuth in a very contentious match at the PGT Heads Up Showdown. Uh, the double birds came oh, out. Oh, yeah, they did. And that matchup, that, that rivalry, that hatred continues between those two. We are playing 200, 400, 800. On no gamble, no future on Poker After Dark. That's a big game. Person has the king nine of clubs. He opts to limp. Hanks, in position, raises it up to $3,000 with a 10 eight of hearts, playing effectively $300,000 deep, maybe a little shorter, 280, whatever, it's all roughly the same. Daifuku, in the small blind, playing $200,000 deep, opts to call with the ace queen offsuit. I think he probably just wants to go ahead and put in a re-raise here because you don't really want to play ace queen offsuit three ways out of position. But whatever, he calls back to Person. He didn't limp the king, nine of clubs to fold. Let's see the flop. Person has challenged Helmuth to a $1 million heads up match. Of course, there are some conditions for that sure. million dollar heads up challenge. Person refuses yeah, to play Phil if it's anyone else's money. He wants it to be well, please all Phil, and he wants like proof of it. Wants him to feel the pain. Right. I wouldn't bomb like that. The flop comes eight, six, five, giving Hanks top pair, backdoor flush draw, pretty solid hand. Person has a gut shot with two over cards, also pretty solid. Daifuku has the ace queen, which is nothing. Checks around to Hanks, he bets $5,000, nice chunky bet, which I think is perfectly fine and reasonable. Daifuku decides to call with the ace queen. I think you just gotta fold here. It's an annoying spot where you probably had the best hand pre-flop, but whenever you get a really bad flop for you, and a flop that actually interacts really well with what I think person is limping with, which would be a lot of suited connected type stuff or small and medium pairs. This is a spot where you just have to get out of the way because even if you spike an ace or a queen, you could easily be crushed. So he sticks around though. Over to person with the gut shot and the over cards and the backdoor flush draw. I don't really see how you can fold. I think there definitely is merit to raising. If you are known to be the type of player who limps with suited connected type stuff and limps with small pairs, you want to be check raising with some draws. And some of the best draws to raise are draws that lack showdown value, meaning if it checks down, you just lose, like king high. And also draws that are going to have a tough time getting paid off if you actually hit. And notice in this scenario, if he does get a seven for a straight, he's going to have a pretty tough time getting paid off by anyone. So I think this is actually a pretty reasonable draw to put in the check raise with if you feel inclined. You don't have to, but I think facing the 5,000 bet and the call, I really don't mind making it something like 20,000 in this spot and planning to blast off. Seems aggressive, seems wild, but you need to find some bluffs here. And if you're not bluffing with junky gut shots, I don't really know what other logical hands you necessarily want to be check raising with unless it's a seven, which also would make a pretty good amount of sense. Anyway, let's see what the turn brings. Dylan will sweat that one with person as they both Whoa. see the king roll off on the turn. Yeah, and this is an interesting one. Hanks with king a very hearts. big hand as well. That middle pair with... The hearts you just mentioned. The turn brings the king of hearts, Daifuku checks, and person decides to lead, which is when you bet into the aggressor on the previous betting round, who was Hanks. Typically, you want to lead when the turn increases the equity of your entire range to the point that you're now a decently large favorite over your opponents. And you also want to lead when you have a whole lot of nuts in your range that your opponent does not. And in general, when the turn brings an overcard, this is usually not good at all for person because he's going to have a lot of hands that don't contain a king. And if you think about a lot of the logical bluffs for Hanks, it's going to be a lot of hands containing high cards like a king. So I don't think this is a spot where you want to lead in general from a game theory optimal point of view. If you think your opponent's going to be way too aggressive and they're just going to blast off against a turn lead, then maybe you can lead and just load your money in. That said... King nine can't really withstand a whole lot of pressure. It's not like you're trying to get all your money with top pair and a junkie kicker and a gut shot. And if you think your opponent's just going to fold out way too often to a small lead, like if you think they're going to fold out stuff like nine eight for a gut shot and a pair, I mean, I guess that's fine. But leading in this scenario, I don't think makes a whole lot of logical sense. I think you're way better off checking and seeing what develops. And if you do check here and Hanks bets 
and Daifuku raises, then you can just fold because you're probably in terrible shape. Anyway, person does lead 12,000 over to Hanks. Let's see what he does. We've seen Hanks play these sorts of hands rather aggressively, and it looks like he is side. Look at this. Yeah, Here dialing we go. up a raise. 30 more? 42, to 42,000, and person calls very quickly. Hanks, with his marginal made hand and marginal flush draw, opts to bump it up big to 42,000. That seems loose and aggressive to me. This is a spot where I think your marginal made hand is the overriding factor because most of the time by the river, you're gonna have second pair, right? So do you really want to raise with second pair? And I, and I don't think you want to in this scenario unless you know person's leading range is all very marginal and you think you'll be able to make him fold it with a turn raise plus a river jam because the problem is here is that Hanks actually beats a lot of hands and he really does not want to raise and then face an all in, right? I mean, like right here, if anyone rips it all in for $200,000, 160 on top. I think the 10-8 of hearts is a fold, and that is a disaster. This situation comes up a lot in poker tournaments when you're playing something like 40 or 50 big blinds deep on the flop, where you don't bet pretty high equity draws because you really don't want to get check shoved. And once the pot starts to get pretty big like this, your opponents are highly incentivized to shove two pairs and sets because they're almost always good, but they're very vulnerable, and everyone could have a lot of those hands, right? So I really don't like this turn raise unless you think Pearson or person's gonna call with all sorts of nonsense, which Maybe he will, maybe he won't. It's tough to say. I do know that he does get after it some portion of the time. He goes big. Daifuku folds over to person who pretty confidently calls. I don't know if he should even call with his hand. This is a rough one because what wants to raise? Well, high equity draws want to raise for Hanks and high equity made hands want to raise. And you're crushed by the high equity made hands. And I definitely think that Hanks could easily have sets. He could have 9-7. No reason he couldn't, right? He could easily have king six suited. He could easily have ace king, right? These are all hands I think make a lot of sense and you're crushed by them. So I think even though king nine does have a gut shot, I think it probably just wants to fold to the pretty chunky raise whenever you're out of position in this spot, just because you're gonna have a tough time realizing your equity in this situation. He calls though, let's head to the river. And the river is the seven of hearts. Hanks makes the flush while Person makes the no good straight and leads for 75,000. Oh no. Show that card. That's a bad show. <laughs> and he shows the black oh. king. That is a bad show. Shouldn't have shown that card. <laughs> you shouldn't have shown that card. Right? I understand. Oh no way. The river is a disaster for a person. It gives him the straight, but it gives Hanks the back door flush. Person goes for a very, very chunky bet, 75,000. He opts to lead again. I think leading this river probably also doesn't make a whole lot of sense because who has more nut flushes in their range or who has more flushes in general? And I think it's actually going to be Hanks in this scenario because he's gonna feel somewhat inclined to raise the turn with hands like Queen 10 of hearts or 10 nine of hearts, stuff like that, right? Or even ace x of hearts maybe. So this is a spot where I don't think person has a whole lot of flushes. That said, I do think he has a decent number of nines, but you have to realize nines are not actually the nuts here. So while you do normally not mind leading whenever a four flush comes when you have lots of straights and your opponents do not, when there's also a flush available and your opponents could easily have it, that's the scenario where you probably just wanna do a whole lot of checking. Whatever, person goes for a big bet. 75,000, just trying to get full value from sets and two pairs. And then he decides to show the king of clubs. Look, I'm not all for showing cards in the middle of a hand, but if you do show a card, you want to make sure it's a blocker to the nuts. <laughs> Let's see what Hanks does. How good Hanks do you just feel knows if you're yeah, Hanks. Hanks just knows he has the best hand. Now you just have to think about sizing here. You cannot lose. Oh, <laughs> oh, what is happening here? Sure. This is insane. <laughs> Shouldn't have yeah, shown that. Just a total right. free roll. <laughs> <laughs> I think Person knows oh, it now. I think <laughs> oh, no. Person's got that chip in his hand, getting ready to fling out the call. 
how much does Hanks look for now? Well, he's putting on his finest acting job now. If he's, he might just move it in. Cannot lose. It puts Person in an even worse spot. <laughs> Understanding what has happened, this was a disastrous <laughs> decision by Person showing this king. Oh, Unless oh, his intent sick. is to fold somehow. Oh, oh, sick. Facing just a 75,000 lead, I'm not actually sure if the 10 high flush is good enough to raise. I think it's reasonable. I think it's viable. If your opponent is overly call happy, maybe you can put in a raise. We have to realize when your opponent bets 75,000 here, they're saying, I have the nuts or I have nothing. What are the nuts on this board? Well, flushes, right? That said, person clearly led with the straight, so raising has a whole lot of merit. Once your opponent shows, a non-flush, well, obviously now you're going to raise because you have the nuts, right? So the question is, how much will a straight call? That's what you're hoping to get called by. And I think the answer is all of it. I mean, in this scenario, once he bets 75, right, and you have 234, notice Hanks went to 175, essentially like close to a min raise, just praying to get called by some marginal hand. But I think in this spot, you probably want to try to make it look like you're trying to make your opponent fold. And... I'm not really sure this bet size does that. This screams, put another 100,000, please, because I want you to call me. Um, also, one thing I will nitpick on a little bit is that Hanks took a lot of time, like counting out his chips, playing around with them. Usually when people do that, usually when people let the action be on them for a long time, and they're like stacking and restacking chips and all that, usually that's a bit of a sign of strength from a generic read point of view. But that's fine. Let's see if person finds the call. Call? Oh, yeah, call. Cool. 9, 10. Oh. Flush. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I say you shouldn't show yeah. that card, man. Uh -huh. Hanks. <laughs> Person snap calls, and then he realizes, oh my God, the nine straight is no good because there's a flush available. He realizes he made an error. He made a blunder. And to be honest, to be fair, all of us have made blunders at the poker table at one point or another. So what I want you to do, practice a little bit of humility. Take a second and think about the worst blunder you have ever made at the poker table. I want you to pause the video and write me a little story below explaining the worst mistake you ever made. Don't be shy. <laughs> wow, I just made a mistake. I didn't understand what you meant. I understand, I mean, like I lost. I was trying to tell you like, because there's a flush now. No, I know, Hanks, I didn't understand there's a flush on the board. Yeah. I missed the flush. That, uh, that makes sense though. That's the truth. Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would never have done that. I, mean, I just missed the point. That's what I was trying to say. I was even trying to kind of like tell you a little bit. Like, I bet I put it out there. What should I do? Like, what is it? Well, that is a costly error by Eric mm. Person. Me. I mean, I was going to raise anyway, but it made my life easier, obviously. I don't know. Me, man. What the f did I just do? I don't know if I've ever made a mistake <laughs> like that before. <laughs> Easy day. I'm looking forward to reading all of your mistake stories. It's going to be fun. Um, in terms of what has been my biggest mistake, I'm actually pretty good at live poker not making errors. But one time I remember I was very, very tired playing a tournament. Now I don't play tournaments when I'm tired. But I just traveled from somewhere to some other tournament venue. I lay registered into a $5,000 buy-in tournament. I think it was at the win a long time ago. And I was running some bluff on the flop and on the turn and on the river. I bet the flop, opponent called. I bet the turn, the opponent called. I bet the river, the opponent folded. And then I was starting to go muck my hand. And then they said, wait a minute, this other player's in the hand, who I didn't even realize was in the hand the entire time. I certainly would not have triple barreled it off in that scenario if I did not realize that the opponent was in that hand the entire time. Luckily, I didn't do something like show my bluff, because then obviously I get called. In my scenario, fortunately, my opponent tanked and tanked and tanked and then folded. But then I'm like, oh my gosh. I just played this hand without even realizing I had an additional opponent. It's a pretty big mistake. Poker's a fun game. It's important to make sure you're playing as sane as you possibly can. It's important to make sure you're not hyped up and pumped because all of these emotions running through your brain are going to cloud your judgment. You also want to make sure you're not super duper tired like I was because then you're just going to miss stuff. That's me for today. I really am looking forward to reading all your stories below. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor, click the like and subscribe button down below. Also, click the notification bell. Good luck in your games, have fun, and make sure you can read the board.